Okay, we are going to talk about something that you, you already know. I mean, most of it you already know, but there's one little aspect of it that I haven't told you. Um, traditionally, when I teach factoring quadratic equations and quadratic expressions, I throw in rational expressions as part of it, which is things like, you know, um, you know, x squared, like that one I did, x squared minus 4x mi uh, plus 3 over x squared minus 6x plus 5, right? I throw those in, and then, because you've got to practice factoring anyway, you might as well factor. The only thing is, your answers that you've been giving me are only partially true. They're not totally true because there's one little factor that you still have to know about, and that is excluded values. What does exclude to exclude something mean? Merit? Yeah, it's not, you can't you push it away, right? It can't be, you know, you know, I'm sorry. No, you cannot see the movie, okay? You're excluded from this group, right? You can't come into the movie, right? Um, you know, those kind of things, right? Excluded means it's not possible, right? It's not part of it. It's we gotta exclude that because for some reason it's just not okay. Alright? Well that's true with this. Now, I'm gonna start simple, okay? Because it's really simple. It's a simple concept. What if I had two over x? What is the domain? What would the domain be? I mean, in other words, what could x be? Remember domain is all the possible x's. What could x be on that? I could do 2, I could do 4, I could do 6, I could do 8, I could do 10, I could do a million, I could do a billion, I could do a trillion, I could do a zillion, I could do a Google. Could I do anything negative? Google. No, you could Is it impossible to have negative 2 fourths? Is that a problem? Sure. I could do negative, like I could say 2 over negative 4 would be negative 2 fourths, right? 2 over negative 10 would be negative 2 tenths. That's fine. 2 over negative a million would be whatever, <laughs> right? Negative 2 one millionths, right? That's fine. Is there anything x cannot be? Zero. Yes, why? Who said that? Yes, Lila, why? How many times does zero go into two again? What, what is it? What's that rule? If zero is under the line in a fraction, it is undefined, right? Remember, just to re just to review, like like if I just to show you why zero doesn't work, like if I said, let's see, how does this work again? Um, uh, eight. Let's see here. Eight divided by two is what? Four. 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 Okay. Eight divided by two is four. If I multiply two, the de the, the denominator, times what this equals, I will get eight. Right? Two times four is eight. Right? Yeah. Always works. Always works. Sixteen divided by you know um, by eight Three. is two. Seven. Right? If I multiply the denominator by that, I get 16. Always works. All right, but let's try this. What if I had um, two, 2 divided by 0 is 0, right? That's what you'd think, maybe? A million. A billion. 4 billion? Okay, 4 billion, right? All right, so 0 times 4 billion equals 2. No. Yes. yes. Wait, that doesn't work. Oh. Right? So that doesn't work. So it can't be 4 billion. It can't be 4 billion. So a lot of people think, oh, well, zero, 2 over 0 is 0. Please don't, John. Okay, yeah. 2 over 0 is 0. A lot of people think that. So, but 0, that means 0 times 0 is equal to 2. Yeah. Yeah, Lila sees the reasoning the logic behind this. But, right, but do you see how zero doesn't work in the denominator? Nobody in, nobody to this day has ever figured out how many zeros are there, there are in two, or three, or four. 
or any number, or one, right? They don't know. It is undefined. So if zero is in the denominator, it is undefined. Zero, if zero, so if, so this is important, if zero is in denominator, hang on a second, let me just finish my comment. If zero is in the denominator, then the uh, fraction is undefined, right? Is undefined. <laughs> therefore, do you guys know the sign for therefore in math? No. Okay, this, this is the sign for therefore. A dot, a dot, and a dot in a triangular fashion. That means therefore, okay? So when you're taking notes sometimes, you know, thus, you know, right? You just put dot, 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 and you're done, right? Um, <laughs> thus, or therefore, uh, where, where was I? If zero is a denominator, then fraction, the fraction is undefined. Oh, therefore, um, 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 the number That makes the number the 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 wait it's the val let me change this sorry sorry about that the value of x or the unknown whatever that makes that makes the denominator zero uh, zero. Is the excluded value. All right. So write that. If zero is in the denominator, then the fraction is undefined. Right? The value of x that makes the denominator zero is the excluded value. All right? It might not be x, it could be y, it could be z, it could be a, b, c, right? Um, it could be lots of variables. But if one of those is a zero, I mean, makes, makes the whole value zero, then that, that whatever that was, is, um, is the excluded value. So, now let's look at examples. In this case, it's really easy. x cannot equal zero. Zero is the excluded value for x, right? So I could write it this way. Zero is excluded value, right? Usually, though, what you'll see is this. x cannot equal zero. It's the same, same concept. Zero is the excluded value, or x cannot equal zero, right? So that's the answer? That's your answer. Oh, yeah, that is your, that's, you have to say that with your answer, right? In this case, there's nothing more you can do. So you can just, you know, I'm asking you, what is the excluded value? Yes, x is the x cannot equal zero. That's your answer, right? Now let's go a little. <coughs> let's make it a little harder. Here. Oh yeah, because it's like what? It's like saying what can x not be? Right, exactly. What can x not be? That's so good. I'm going to write it down. What? You know, ask. What can x not be? It's a great question, great way to think of it. All right, so what if I did this? Now I'm going to erase this, start over here. What if I had x, uh, excuse me, what if I had 2 <coughs> over x plus 2? Can you see? What can x not be? Sorry, what? <laughs> what would make x plus 2 equal to 0? Right, right? See how if I put a negative 2 in for x, then I'd have a 0 in the denominator. I can't have that. So therefore, x cannot equal negative 2. That's my excluded value, negative 2. That make sense? Right? Now, if you ever are lost, and sorry, 
And if you're ever lost and you can't do it in your head, you can always just set it equal to zero. You can come over here somewhere and say, well, x plus 2 cannot equal 0. So Jason, see what I did there? x plus 2 cannot equal okay, 0, right? Cannot equal 0. Therefore, I'm going to subtract 2, subtract 2. x cannot equal negative 2. So I can do it in my head when they're easy, or if they're not so easy, I can do it like that, right? Pretty straightforward. All right, so now we're going to make it a little harder. 2 over x times x plus 2. Well, so let's use another number, x plus 8. All right. Now it's starting to look like finding the zeros. Remember when we were doing this just like yesterday? <laughs> finding zeros, right? So suddenly I've got, it's not so simple. I've got an x times an x plus 8. So really it's sort of like setting it equal to zero and finding out what would make what would x have to be in order for this to equal zero so just like you were doing with with quadratic expressions you were setting it equal to zero to find the zeros right so i'm going to set the denominator equal to zero for a second so x times x plus eight equals zero. Oh, but that's already factored if a times b equals zero then either a equals 0 or b equals 0. So either x equals 0, you with me? Or x plus 8 equals 0, which means x would be negative 8. Therefore, my excluded value is this. x cannot equal 0 or negative 8. This is only for rational expressions, right? We're only talking about rational, where they're fractions. Right? And the only thing you care about is the denominator. Where a lot of people mess up is they look at the numerator and think, oh, wow, you know, it's like if there's something else. Like if I had x, x times something upstairs, I would think, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to figure out what zeros can't be up there. It's okay to have zero in the, denom in the numerator. It's just the denominator. That's the only one you care about. So that would say either x, the, the excluded values would be zero or negative eight, right? So, sorry, you want to rewrite that? So x cannot equal 0 or negative 8. I'm going to erase this side. We're done with all this. It's really not that complicated. Actually, it's quite simple most of the time. And I'll show you why. I'll show you an example of where it's really quite simple. It's like, it's like, it's like, Everything you know how to do is perfect. That's the, that's the hard part. That's 99.2%. The other 0.8% is this. And it's really easy. So if I did something like, um, uh, let me think. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. OK, x squared plus, um, uh, where was I, plus, uh, um, 9x plus 14 over x squared plus, um, where was I? <laughs> um, 10x plus, um, God, what am I doing? I'm doing this in my head. Uh, 2 times um, 16. All right. So let's say I have that. And I want to, I first, I have to factor it. I can't do anything until I factor it. So, and they, they, they say simplify it. That was the answer. I mean, that was what they asked you to do, simplify. Okay? So we're going to simplify it. We're going to do x plus 2 times x plus 7. Is it over? No. Okay. Over x plus 2, did I do this right, times x plus 8? Is that right? Yes? Did I factor that right? Well, I'll check. So 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 7 is 14. 8x plus 2x is 10x. Yes. 7x plus 2x is 9x. Yes. OK, we're done. So what would I do to, to finish my problem like you've been doing, like you did last night? 
Cross out what? The X plus right. Two. So that can be crossed out. So really, my answer is, um, my answer is uh, X plus seven over X plus eight. But this is the key that I have. You haven't known until today. You have to also state what is the excluded value. Okay. Okay, you have to state, in addition to this, you have to state what is the excluded value. Now, what is the excluded value? I go back to my factored denominator. I don't look at this denominator. This is where everyone makes a mistake. Are you guys listening? Don't use this one. That is the answer, yes. But go back to where you factored initially. What can x not be? What would it, either x plus 2 is equal to 0 or x plus 8 is equal to 0. x would be, if, if x were negative 2, right, then I'd have 0. If x were negative 8, I'd have 0 here, right? Even though I cross those out, I still got to use those to find my zeros, the original ones. I can't use this because this is only half true. Right? If I just said x cannot equal negative 8, that's true. That's true. x cannot equal negative 8, but it's not the whole truth. The whole truth is or negative 2. See that? x cannot either equal to negative 8 or negative 2. So I have to go back to the original factoring of the denominator. Does that make sense? Yeah. But it's really easy. This part was the hard part. This is so easy because you already know. Oh, negative 2 and negative 8 are excluded values, right? That's all it is. That's excluded values. Um, I think that's all I need to say. So I think, any questions? Fist to five, you get it? Awesome, great. Now if you're ever confused, if you're ever not sure, just take the denominator off to the side. Mia, look, listen. Just take the denominator off to the side somewhere and set it equal to zero and find the zeros. And those zeros are the excluded values. Does that make sense? Got it? Okay. All right, so that's it for the lecture. I'm going to pass out the homework.